pilgrims when they first came to Massachusetts called it, it the paradise of all these parts because of the, the amazing fisheries that were here of river herring, cod, all sorts of uh, natural bounty. And I think that Massachusetts can kind of uh, do a lot of good for itself by getting rid of some of these old dams to try and boost the system. Because you can reduce fishing quotas, so you can tell fishermen you should fish less, or you can increase the kind of bait fish that are going into the system through some of the, these measures. So for me, the, you know, in a world where you don't have many kind of win-win scenarios, this is a big win-win scenario Massachusetts has. I wish I saw more fish and more like animals inside because I like when they went to catch the fish there was only one so it's kind of sad to see you know like everyone there's more people in the world so the populations are decreasing so I think that <laughs> yeah I'd like to see more fish definitely and stuff like that. There was actually a petition to list river herring as an endangered species a few years ago and so I think we're really at a kind of a tipping point here. There are a lot of factors that go into determining if a dam would be a good candidate. Uh, one of the biggest ones is actually the ownership of the dam, because if you don't have an owner who is a willing participant, that's an obstacle that you have to overcome before you can even do anything. Um, so a willing owner is very important. My grandfather built a dam on the third Herring Brook. 1929. It had a series of uses for the community until we reached a point where they no longer serve that primary use. And then when we started talking about, you know, taking the dam out, the people on the pond weren't too happy because they had a place to fish, they had a place to skate, they had a, something to look at. And that dam, it breached about, oh, 10 years ago. So both of his dams have kind of gone the way of all things. It was very early in our state, in Massachusetts, for dam removal. In fact, throughout the country, it was still a relatively new um, type of restoration project. People hadn't really been thinking about taking out dams before. Uh, so it wasn't well known uh, to, to even consider taking out a dam. So this was really right up there in terms of the you know early thinking about what could we do in our own state about uh, restoring our rivers and dam removal. You know, you can look at streams, you can dig up the money, you can uh, get uh, good partners, but if you don't get, if you don't build a consensus, if you don't get people behind the, the idea and the process, then you don't get anywhere because they'll come out and they'll oppose you because they don't want to lose their pond. So, uh, North and South Rivers ran into a little bit of that on TAC Factory. But the fact that that dissipated so quickly was a good sign. Uh, and increasingly now, when, whenever I talk to people, they're very supportive of the idea of the emerald. While they may feel like they're losing their pond, they're actually gaining something that is going to be beautiful. The having the free-flowing river is, or brook, uh, is the public good, basically. You know, the, the having the dam, you have a pond there for your local neighborhood or community, but when you, when you let the river flow, uh, you're letting those benefits flow all downstream uh, to you know, a whole uh, swath of people. As we reconnect the, the systems and make them continuous, you're going to have that biomass, those fish coming in further upstream, and you're going to have a more diversity of species, but you're also going to increase the uh, availability of nutrients for various species like heron and things like that. And suddenly they can start uh, feeding on those as well, and raccoon and possum, things like that that can come to the river. So it really increases the biomass of the system itself. It's a really, uh an issue about connections. 
And so that it seems like this local issue of there's a pond here and there's a dam here and it's a very localized issue. But the, the truth of the matter is that uh, removing that dam connects that whole habitat to the wider community. It's all linked together. I mean, the, the river herring that used to come up these streams, Third Herring Brook, I mean, that's how it got its name, was the abundant herring populations. Uh, they provide forage for a wide variety of things, from the migratory birds like the osprey, to the striped bass that anglers like to catch in the salt water, to many, many other things. Um, it's a big part of the ecosystem of these migratory fish. And so anything we could do to maintain or increase their populations is going to benefit the ecosystem as a whole. It's that dichotomy between civilized and wild that, that we all deal with. We all live in nature, but the wild is something, it's, it's nature that's working. What we've tended to do is disrupt the wild. And I think that's where people make the mistake, you know, when they look at a, a mill pond and they can see nature in the mill pond. But it's not the wild process that would be there if the, if the dam was out. We have over 2,000 dams here in Massachusetts, and you know, one of the first things that the settlers, the European colonists, when they came here was to build dams on the stream. So we have almost 400 years of dam building here in Massachusetts. And that doesn't count all the smaller dams uh, like Cranberry Bog Flumes or the little tiny dam at Tiffany Road. Basically, each culvert acts like a dam, but there's 2,000 uh, listed dams in Massachusetts. Uh, a large portion of those could probably be removed because they're no longer functioning to provide power or other things. They're basically just decaying. And when they were put in, people really didn't think about the impacts on fish of building these dams. So this is the pit tag in the plastic bag and it's the same as in the fish. And we're gonna run it through the antenna to see if the antenna's working. It should hear a beep. If we catch um, brook trout or any other species that we want to tag, we'll be tagging them with pit tags, uh, and that will enable us to get a unique identification on the fish. Right now, there's, um, or there will be, I believe, um, two antennas set up to monitor the fish movements, uh, and hopefully we'll see some of those wild brook trout from the tributary go down and hit those antennas in the main stem. Because one of the big hopes that I have is some of those wild brook trout that have survived in this tributary is to enable them to get down into the salt water again, which is what their ancestors were doing naturally. If you think about those dams as sort of uh, clogs or, or clots in a circulatory system of, of the coastal uh, watersheds, by having a negative impact on those smaller tributaries, you're having a negative impact on the, the larger river and the ocean as well. Um, the entire watershed is crucial to maintaining the idea of an ocean full of fish. A little bit of attention for long enough, for a decade or two, allows uh, nature to come back. And basically, nature will come back. I think that, that it takes hope, and sometimes we may fail, but the general pattern has been that if you give nature the opportunity to recolonize an area that had been made impossible for it, nature will come back. And I think our obligation is to just take the, the areas that we've spoiled and be able to recreate the habitat that, uh, that enables nature to really flower back again and offer us the, the things that we value. Very hopeful, I'm very hopeful that, that, that they bring back the numbers of fish and that the rivers are brought back to, you know, higher levels. There's a lot hanging on this and it's about more than just me going fishing or my friends going fishing or catching a few trout. It's about uh, the whole interconnected spider web of, of life that, that runs down to the ocean. You know, this story is repeated over and over with every environmental problem we have, um, whether it's a dam or pollution or um, any of the things that we're facing. They're people problems, and so you got to start with people and and engage them in in changing the world. This world is fragile. Our resources are fragile. 
And I would say if we value them, do something to uh, improve them. It just takes somebody that wants to see something done. It's amazing what you can do. Get active, do something. Whatever you do, if it makes you feel better, it would probably be good for other people too. Our vision for the future, uh, for the third Hambrook, is that we will have all three of those dams removed, and then we'll have a great fish ladder up at Jacob's Pond, and we'll be able to have our volunteers document herring coming up into Jacob's Pond. And because those herring are able to access Jacob's Pond for spawning, the population will increase, and we'll have a place where people can come and see thousands and thousands of herring migrating where nothing is happening right now. I've had the fortune, good or bad, to have lived in the same place for all of my life. In that time, the pond near my home has been enduring all of its seasons of ice and floods and droughts as I have endured all of my seasons of walking, skiing, paddling, through my joy and grief. Blind was each year with its high singing of tiny hyla after the thaw. The sun struck greening of fields as trees flowered, the belching of summer bullfrogs, the hungry buzz of deer flies, the shortening of the days, the final and mad orange tinting of the maples before the fall, the spirals of snow caught and wind devils racing across the ice, all passing and then returning unchanging within the cycle. Yet by this emergence, as if the farmer building the wall was blind to the wall's line of travel, the stone walls tell that there was a time before the pond, before we boys swung from rope swings strung from the tree on the old dam. Sometimes I think of that time, before the trees were cleared and the rocks were piled and lined into walls, when there was a stream of peat-stained water chortling over gravel, flowing through sun and shadow. One day soon the dam will break and a change will come and what I've always known will be no more and what I've not known will be again. Thank you.